for fiscal year 21 onwards. The agricultural sector has grown ahead of the economy in the first nine months, and near-term prospects are also promising with higher crude production, higher rubby sowing, and favorable commodity prices. Further, measures announced by the government in the recent budget are positive for the agricultural sector in the near to long term. Overall allocation for the sector under various schemes has increased by around 6% for the next year. The budget primarily focused on increasing farmers' income and their access to credit, which also augurs well for the companies in the agricultural sector. In addition, the increase in custom duty on shrimp feed and increase in custom duty plus taxes on crude palm oil will help in increasing domestic production and is beneficial for Indian companies. However, the rate of recovery remains slower in a few sectors. Demand from the Horeca segment is still subdued, and out-of-home consumption is much lower. But we believe that with the opening of the economy, demand should increase in the near term. Moving to the financial and operational performance, the key highlights and developments for the third quarter and the nine months ended December 2020 are as follows. We had another quarter of good performance. Our consolidated profit before tax during quarter three fiscal year 21 increased to 87 crore, representing a growth of 28.4% year on year. This was despite a 14.3% decline in the consolidated total income. Similarly, for the first nine months, our profit before tax increased by 39.8% to 367 crore, despite a 10.2% decline in consolidated total income. Please do note that the third quarter and nine months of the current year, total income and profit before tax exclude non-recurring profit of 2.8 crore earned on sale of land. Also, for nine months, total income excludes 9.6 crore, and profit before tax excludes 4.8 crore of non-recurring income earned from the sale of a real estate project. Now, I will discuss the key financial and business highlights for each of our segments. In annual feed, the segment results grew by 9.1% during the current quarter and by 11.2% in the first nine months. However, lower demand for the end protein basket, that is milk, chicken, and eggs, continue to impact feed volumes for cattle, broiler, and layer feed. As a result, volumes declined by 16.5% each in quarter three fiscal year. 21 and in the nine months fiscal year 21, and sales were lower by 23% and 19% respectively. So the pickup in feed volumes in quarter three has been lower than earlier expectations. In the coming months, we expect a faster uptick in the demand from the horizon segment as restrictions on these sectors have started easing. In the vegetable oil segment, the current quarter was adversely impacted by a white fly attack leading to lower fresh fruit bunch arrivals and lower oil content in the fruit. Therefore, segment revenue and segment results were lower by 16.6% and 30% respectively. For the nine months fiscal year 21, while revenue grew by 5.2% driven by an increase in food farm oil prices, segment results declined by 7.8%. In the crop protection standalone business, Increase in volumes led to revenue and segment result growth of 13.4% and 23.2% respectively during the quarter. Further, elections were 572 crore in the first nine months compared to 454 crore in the same period uh, in the previous year, which is an increase of 26%. However, due to supply chain disruptions and low application opportunities in the first half of the year, sales and profitability of the nine months have been adversely impacted. Moving to the performance of our subsidiaries in Aztec Life Sciences in the current quarter, total income and EBITDA declined due to deferment of a few orders and decline in the price of one of the key products. However, on a nine-month basis, total income grew at a healthy rate of 12% and EBITDA grew by 62%. This growth is driven by higher volume and realizations of key products. Geographically, revenue growth in the nine-month period is driven by the domestic business. However, exports have also been higher than the previous year. 
in our poultry subsidiary called Rich Tyson Food Limited, while sales were marginally lower this quarter than the previous year. Profitability was strong as the company reported a EBITDA of 10.6 crore compared to an EBITDA loss of 9.2 crore last year. For nine months, the revenue grew by 15.5% and EBITDA was, was 41.1 crore compared to an EBITDA loss of 14.1 crore in the previous year. Both light bear and young segments recorded strong growth in profits and benefited from low raw material prices. In our daily subsidiary, Creamline Game Products Limited, sales were impacted by low out-of-home consumption and subdued demand from the horeca segment. However, the impact in the current quarter is lower than the impact seen in the previous two quarters. During the third quarter, revenues declined by 10.1% year-on-year, but low procurement prices and focus on fixed cost control resulted in sharp editor growth. We also relaunched Golden Jersey Ghee during the quarter. For the nine months, while sales have declined by 17.3%, EBITDA is up by 16.9%. Chiriya's joint venture in Bangladesh, API Goodrich, recorded another quarter of strong performance with revenue growth of 25% and profit before tax growth of 50.3%. Performance was driven by strong volume growth across all feed categories, that is cattle, poultry, and aqua feed. That concludes our business and financial performance update for the quarter and the nine months. With this, I close my opening remarks. We will be now happy to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prashant Biani from Prabhudas Leeladhar. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so the economy is in unlocked mode and out of home consumption has also increased. Uh, but our uh, decline in feed volumes is still to the level of in Q1 of, the, of around 16 to 17 percent when the impact of uh, lockdown was much more severe. So in current quarter as well, this 16 percent decline in feed volumes, what has led to this? If uh, we can get some more clarity on that. Mm. So uh, even though economy has started uh, improving, the contraction of the uh, sector has not eased fully. According to us, uh, chicken is still operating at about 75 to 80%. Chicken and egg milk is operating at about 80 to 85%. Uh, in the first month of this quarter, current quarter, we had seen some improvements in almost all the animal protein sector, but for uh, the bird flu, which hit the uh, egg and the chicken sector again. So my sense is this is the quarter when consumption will come down. This is the quarter when profitability and volumes of the animal feed businesses will improve. And you will see that consumption of milk has already started improving and shortages have been registered in several parts of the country and X uh, farm milk prices have also increased. So my sense is that April to June will be the quarter when we will come back to what we were in last January as far as animal protein industry is concerned. Okay. And so on the palm oil side, uh, how much was our volume for quarter three, processing volume, plantation area, and recovery rate? Just one sec. So I'll just add to what I said. I think uh, for first six, seven months of this calendar year, milk will be short. Milk prices at the farm level and with a time lag at retail level will go up. So my sense is that profitability will be impacted in the first six, seven months of the first quarter, but mm -hmm. it will start improving uh, thereafter. Okay. Uh, in terms of the uh, my farm. Uh, Volume, we, we have around 1 lakh 
uh, tons of uh, FFB which we processed, the fresh from bunch which we processed. We sold around 19,000 tons in this particular quarter. Oil. Oil. Through uh, palm oil. Yeah. And, and sir, how, how much is the plantation area in this yeah. Plantation area would be around 73,000 uh, hectares uh, overall. Including the Telangana uh, allotment that we got? That is That will come in future, yeah. This is the area which is already planted. This is already planted. Right. And recovery rate would be how much? The oil extraction rate would be close 18.7%. And so this OER was how much in Q2 and Q3 last year? Q3 last year was around 19%. And, and quarter two? Quarter two, I will just wait. Quarter two, 17.3. 17.3. 17.3 was Q2. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Sagdir from Green Capital Single Family Office. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon to uh, the management. My question pertains uh, to Woodbridge Tyson Foods. Uh, what have we seen in terms of last quarter's performance vis-a-vis uh, -vis this quarter's performance uh, in terms of modern uh, retail home trade and in terms of the movement of chicken and uh, products uh, on the shelf? And can we anticipate a better performance in uh, quarter four, considering we uh, had a, a drawdown in uh, quarter four of last year, Jan, Feb, March onwards on the modern retail home uh, If you could just uh, uh, talk about some points there. Thank you. So as far as Q3 was concerned, we were very, very happy because uh, whether it was Yummies, whether it was RGC, or whether it was Live Bird, all of them were doing very well. Uh, profitability wise also and sales wise because the markets were coming back to normal. Uh, profitability also improved because of low raw material prices so cost of production of chicken had gone down. Uh, we were expecting a very very good quarter uh, for all the chicken products. Unfortunately because of bird flu there has been a little bit of setback uh, particularly in the last uh, 20 days of January and now that some improvement has started. Uh, we still believe that uh, post 15th of February, the chicken consumption and the prices will uh, rise further and the uh, prices will become remunerative. Uh, raw metal costs are still benign, so we expect that whatever we have lost in the first few weeks of this quarter will be made up in the last few weeks of this quarter. Having said that, I must tell you that if this is um, we, if these kind of disruptions, whether it is bird flu or whether it is any other kind of a reason uh, like last year which was uh, corona chicken prices go down and they come back with a vengeance so our sense is that uh, we are likely to have a uh, very good uh, march in the first quarter next year because chicken production again has taken a uh, taken a turn downward so we believe that in a few weeks the shortages will hit yummy is uh, is doing well it is uh, not that it is growing at 40-50% what we did in the first half of the year, but we are maintaining a steady pace of 15-17% to 17 growth Q on Q uh, in the yummy segment. Uh, relates to, uh, is there any uh, innovation planned in terms of expanding the chain line while I understand India to be a predominantly uh, vegetarian or a chicken poultry uh, country? But uh, there are certain trends to indicate plant-based meat products or even certain meat products where the consumption is increasing in India. Mm -hmm. So is there any uh, a line to say that Goatage Tyson might look at uh, certain more meat rather than chicken in the coming year? And if you could just talk about that a little bit. So uh, Tyson has progressed well in U.S. on this alternate meat. And uh, we are watching, we have... Uh, the uh, know-how uh, through Tyson, uh, as and when we believe that market is ready in India, and we keep on doing consumer surveys for, th for that, uh, it will not take us long time because of our uh, partnership with Tyson to launch products like these. 
Okay, great. Thank you. That really helps, and all the best for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, first question on the palm, palm oil side. Now, if I look at the, the nine-month performance here, uh, while the recovery rates you mentioned, you know, especially for this quarter is largely flattish what it was last quarter. But on the margin side, they're, they're, the performance has not been as great. Uh, so if you could, you know, put some light over this year performance and how should we, you know, look at this business going ahead? So uh, let me tell you that first time in the history of palm oil in this country, uh, we had this white fly attack on the plantation and not just us, but all the other companies also have suffered because this is a problem which will affect the community rather than uh, a few gardens. Uh, unfortunately, when this, the, the, this was noticed, the, it was also at the uh, starting point of corona lockdown. And the, the sad part is that in spite of the fact that we knew what the treatments were, it couldn't be controlled because of the lockdown in the first few weeks. And that is why the FFB production for all the players have suffered. And that is primarily the reason why this business has contraction of margins. So not only we had less fruits, initially we even had less oil because uh, this white fly is a very devastating insect for all crops. Now, what has happened is uh, in last uh, three, four months, um, rampant spraying has been done uh, by all players supported by the government. Several uh, other kind of uh, biological treatments have also been embarked upon and with a very, very good success because we are seeing that as compared to last year, the infestation is at very low level. We will still keep our fingers crossed because this is a fight which any individual company or farmer cannot fight. It has to be fought by all the companies and all the gardens have to be sprayed regularly to keep this insect away. That is primarily the reason why the OER suffered initially and fresh fruit bunch arrival suffered uh, in this business. If you see, this would have been one of the greatest years of, for the business because of such high oil prices. But unfortunately, because of this black swan event, uh, both in terms of corona and in terms of uh, white fly attack, um, we could just barely uh, come to the level of last year, actually. Sure, sir. So, sir, uh, uh, so this year is largely done. So, but let's say FY22 onwards, and and where I'm coming from is, you know, our earlier commentary wherein we had, uh, you know, highlighted the the mechanization as well as the newer machinery, which would have helped the company in terms of getting a higher yield as well as sort of you know margin negative investment there. So, should those benefits start accruing FY22 onwards, or you know, how should one look at it? Well, I'm saying that uh, one good thing about plantation is that. Uh, every year is a new year for plantation. In case there is no insect infestation, we are very sure that OER as well as fruit arrival will uh, improve. And almost uh, three, 4,000 hectares in Andhra Pradesh will also come into production, and that will also add to our volumes. So we are expecting a good year in all three areas, more oil, more fruits, and better prices. Okay, okay, fair enough. Uh, sir, secondly, on the uh, <clears throat> sorry, secondly on the animal feed side, mm -hmm. now we have seen a pretty impressive performance there on the margins front. Although realizations have been probably you know declining over the last year, or even a, even a flatter sort of a structure, you know, on a Q and Q basis. So two parts there. One is how is the volume breakup uh, between uh, the respective sub segments here, you know, uh, broiler, cattle, layer, etc. And, uh, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on the margin sustainability? I remember you had earlier also mentioned that we'll maintain or improve these margins. Yeah. But uh, what should be the steady state uh, outlook here? So, uh, before that, I'll just make one comment on palm oil, and then my colleague will give you uh, the, uh, the numbers. So, I think you must uh, understand one thing is that this oil price is a pulses moment for us in India. The way it happened in pulses a few years ago and pulse production went up, uh, I think that is likely to happen in oil seed production also. And I must tell you the proactive step of the government in terms of reducing the uh, duty from 27, uh, from 32.5% to 15%, 27.5% to 15% and putting 17.5% agriculture step. 
what they are also indicating that should the oil prices fall globally they will still have room to increase duty to keep the local oil prices at very remunerative levels for the farmers so this is the point i wanted to make yeah you can tell about uh, sure mm. in terms of our volumes uh, we have around 125000 tons of uh, cattle feed and poultry feed is uh, around 120 tons again 120000 tons and aqua feed is around 23000 tons and fresh is other feed yeah Okay, and lastly, your comment on the margins front, because you know, uh, while well, the realizations have been okay, but margins have improved significantly. So, your thoughts there? Uh, so, uh, we we expect uh, the raw metal prices to remain benign, except for soybean, which has definitely uh, gone up. I am very sure that the kind of coverages we have, uh, because uh, last year also we could have really done well, but for COVID, because we ended up. with very good coverage and suddenly raw metal prices fell so we had to carry this uh, um, high cost uh, raw material through the pnl now this year if you ask me in case there is no untoward incident uh, we are very well covered and we believe that we will be able to maintain uh, these margins and you will see this good news from the current quarter onwards okay great sir thank you and all the best thank you The next question is from the line of Anirudh Joshi from ICICI. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello, sir. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, two questions. Uh, one, uh, in case of dairy, the profitability of the sector is almost at the peak level now, uh, considering where the global S and P prices are inching upwards, and uh, the way the Uh, even milk prices are also starting in China. Basically, the profitability sector might come under pressure in India. Uh, Mr. Joshi, maybe request you to keep a uh, distance between your spe- uh, mouthpiece and. Yeah, is it okay now? Yeah, now it's fine, sir. Okay, so the question is, uh, dairy sector profitability is at peak, so uh, now probably profitability might come down. So. how do we see the profitability of uh, cream line working and secondly uh, you have also got uh, now brand name change from jersey to godrej jersey so almost 3 uh, to 4 months have been over obviously it's a uh, not a long period but any um, early indications that is there more acceptance for the milk considering now there is godrej which is a extremely trustworthy name attached to the brand and have you seen any traction for the premium products etc so that is question number 1 and point question number 2 is that uh, the issues like bird flu uh, kind of represent a good opportunity for a organized and strong player like godrej agrovet to gain market share on a sustainable basis so uh, what are the strategies that the company is working on to uh, gain market share yeah thanks so uh, cream dye lady i'll uh, refresh what i have been telling you for some time is that in year fy19 and fy20 we have commissioned several new uh, production facilities like a vishakhapatnam plant and a value added plant near hyderabad and these investments have been substantial considering the size of the business and they were supposed to start playing out from um, q4 and q1 uh, q1 of this year and q4 of last year but unfortunately it took a setback however uh, having said that i must tell you that there is steady improvement in our ebitda margin if you see quarter 3 uh, quarter 3 of 2020 our ebitda margin was about 2.5% it has jumped to 5.4% and we strongly feel that our focus on value added products will continue to keep on improving this ebitda margin the second thing i wanted to say was that ever since this brand uh, uh, thing has been done month on month there is a steady increase in all our Uh, uh products including liquid milk curd etc uh, but for the uh, institutional segment which is very subdued still so the overall numbers uh, are improving in retail but institutional segment is still not showing that kind of traction having said that uh, uh, i must say that we are very very encouraged by the digital marketing initiative taken in both our businesses 
because that was the only possibility and an efficient uh, vehicle to reach as many consumers as possible, both in yummies and value-added uh, products. Unfortunately, uh, several uh, uh, studies which are done for market share have not been done by uh, market share calculating companies. So we strongly believe in yummies in Godrej Tyson, as well as our value-added products, particularly uh, um, flavored milk, etc. In modern retail, we will see increased market share in the current quarter. Now, high prices are a regular phenomena once in two, three years in dairy business. And I think that will put a lot of pressure on our profitability in the first six months. But we must also remember that this is a business where once the prices go up, they don't come down. So come flush by August, September, we believe that the prices X farm will go down and that will definitely improve our margins considerably. So we might have a tough first two quarters, but we will have a very, very good last two quarters, I'm very sure. Also, hopefully, uh, next financial year, with the economy opening, the Horeca segment sort of opening up, uh, our business also, especially the institutional part of the business, should start looking up. Because in the current year, uh, this particular business has got uh, severely impacted because of the Horeca segment. And uh, each so in our case, the exposure to the Horeca segment was more, and that's where we got impacted more. Okay, sir. So, uh, what is the total contribution of Horeca plus uh, institutional to the overall cream line sales? In in liquid milk, curd, etc., it used to be close to thirty percent. Okay. Okay, sir. So, and the last question on the strategies to gain market share in uh, poultry and poultry feed business given people get worried about the unorganized products but they are still okay to eat organized products uh, like Godrej Tyson or Yummies etc. So how do you see that market share gain moment happening so for Godrej? In, in both the geographies we operate our retail sales has been less affected than the uh, commodity sales as far as chicken is concerned. And uh, we are getting a lot of institutional orders also because a lot of these institutions which earlier would not buy from us, our uh, 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 inquiries are coming. So my sense is that uh, once this bird flu blows over, say by March, April, our processing plants in, in, uh, in both in Bangalore and uh, Taloja and near Maharashtra, are likely to operate at about 70 to 75 percent and uh, i need to tell you that first uh, jan to march last year these plants at at uh, we it used to operate at a capacity of about 60 65 percent so we are seeing very good traction for processed chicken yummy as you know is up by almost 30 35 percent over last year and that trend is likely to continue okay so last question from my side um in case of shrimps, uh, we are still seeing that the entire industry is still uh, not doing the way it used to. Uh, so how do you see the shrimp feed part of uh, animal feed business uh, doing? And what is the, I mean, uh, let's say one year kind of an outlook on uh, that business. Now almost 6 to 7 percent of USA population is down with COVID. So the major customer or uh, shrimp itself is uh, having multiple problems. So how should we read about shrimp feed business? So I'm very optimistic about the shrimp and shrimp feed business because of two, three reasons. First reason is that uh, out of a market of about 1.2 million tons of shrimp feed, 12, 13% of share had gone to these imported feeds just because of price differential and because of low raw metal price outside, a lot of Chinese and Vietnamese uh, feed companies were selling feed in India. Because of duty increase from 5 to 15 percent, that uh, price advantage they had will be gone, and that uh, benefit will come to local companies. So, uh, and not only that price benefit will come to local companies, because we will have both advantages. Advantage to get market share and advantage to improve, improve margins, because they have to increase their prices by 10% now. So that is point number one. Point number two is that uh, the, the news which is coming up of the placement 
for the coming year. Everybody is very optimistic because you must also understand that placement of March, April will only come into market by July, August. And we expect that most of the developed world where our uh, shrimp go will be vaccinated uh, by that time. So we expect a very good year for shrimp. Okay. Okay, sure, sir. Uh, many thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipesh from Equiris. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for taking my questions. Sir, in the animal feed segment, you gave the absolute numbers. Can you please give the volume uh, growth number for your individual segments, that is cattle, broiler, and the aqua, please? First line books or fourth book? This quarter, please. Okay. Yeah. So, we have, in, uh, we service uh, same quarter last year, we have regrown in, in volume in all the segments. Except for aqua. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, so around 12% degrowth is there in uh, in cattle feed, around 20% degrowth in broiler feed, and around 28%. So poultry is around 24% or so. Okay. And the growth in aqua, sir? So that's a uh, small growth we are having. In case of shrimp feed, we are having a growth of around 4%. Understood. Thanks. Uh, secondly, sir, given the sharp drop in the broiler prices, uh, just wanted your thoughts on how are the bird placements happening uh, in January, February, and uh, what kind of volume and pricing impact you see on your broiler and glare feed segment in this quarter? So, uh, definitely there is some drop in uh, placements of uh, broiler, but not that significant actually. So, uh, we believe that uh, our broiler feed volumes definitely will not be impacted. As far as layer is concerned, uh, the placement of layer bird cannot be impacted because of few weeks of bird flu because the life cycle of this bird is almost a year. And uh, you must have seen the egg prices have still held on and they have not dropped to the extent the way broiler prices have dropped because there is a, uh, still a little bit of shortage of eggs because of lower placement during COVID. And this shortage of eggs is going to continue for next six, seven months. So we believe that our uh, uh, broiler feed volumes are likely uh, are not likely to be impacted too much this quarter, but layer feed volumes will start picking up as the layer placement starts uh, from March, April onwards. Understood. So uh, in your palm oil segment, uh, just wanted to understand, uh, given the high CPO prices and the stable OER ratio that you just talked about, uh, why did the bit margins reduce YOY? Is there any change in the pricing formula or the depreciation number has increased? So uh, in case of uh, oil farm business, though the selling prices increased, uh, we had seen a uh, small drop in the oil extraction ratio we saw it last year. And that, as I mentioned earlier, has happened primarily because of the white fly attack which was there. So uh, that is the reason why our oil extraction ratio in the current year is lower than that of last year. So there is no update on the pricing formula that Telangana government was going to do? Uh, so Telangana government, all both the governments have released pricing formula. And it is slightly higher than expectation, uh, definitely. So, but... Uh, uh, I don't see a material impact because anyway, uh, uh, we have already been providing at about 18.2 or 18.3 percent. So there is only marginal increase uh, in in the formula. Okay. Uh, lastly, and sir, uh, what is? I also tell you one thing is that yeah, out of something like 35,000, 36,000 hectares in combined Andhra Pradesh, only about 50, 1,500 to 2,000 is in Telangana. Okay, understood. Uh, lastly, sir, uh, what is the outlook on the CPO prices given that they are still at very high levels? Mm. I think I told you that uh, CPO prices will continue to be high level for some more time. We accept, expect that from uh, Q2 uh, of the next year, that is from July onward, they will start softening and that is what the expectation of the central government is and that is why they have created a space for increasing duty. Uh, um, by reducing the custom duty and putting that agriculture set. So my sense is that uh, government is very, very focused on 
improving the oil seed production in the country and uh, even though the prices fall i i i have reasons to believe that government will provide protection because of uh, uh, duty increases so that i am asked one more question please uh, uh, but I, I just wanted to add one more line sure. that uh, uh, at you know all food products i have seen whether it is chicken egg or milk at certain prices the demand starts tripping and cpo prices are extremely high as far as that is concerned and at this level the demand also starts tripping so we are not very happy at a price of 95000 to 100000 rupees uh, per ton of cpo because at that time at that point the demand starts suffering understood hmm. so can you give the ssb uh, process number for last year you gave this year it was uh, this quarter it was 1 lakh tons what was it the in the third quarter last year please that would be around 1 lakh 31000 okay thank you sir all the best thank you a reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time the next question is from the line of sumanth kumar from motilal oswal financial services please go ahead yeah hi sir uh, so uh, with the rising raw material uh, prices uh, of soya bean and others can we expect price increase in annual feed segment already happening okay so how, how how is the price increase in the current current quarter so, and current month i would say uh, december to january the poultry feed prices have increased by about 3% okay okay it is in, in line with the uh, pra, the, uh, the price increase of soybean yes so what about the contribution it is yeah yeah all full pass through was there okay and the talking about overall the you have to, uh, talked about the bird flu and its impact so uh, in how uh, in in this coming quarter uh, this quarter we have seen an impact on the volume what kind of uh, impact volume impact uh, is expected in the ca- coming uh, couple of quarters so, as i told you that whenever we have a problem like this it is always followed by very high prices so profitability goes up and uh, definitely with each of these uh, disruptions the process chicken market Uh, improves so we believe that uh, our market share in the processed chicken and yummies will improve as we uh, as the bird flu uh, uh, scare goes away and profitability will also increase because commodity prices that is chicken and uh, chicken particularly at the live bird level will go up uh, it has already started going up if you ask me about 25th or 26th of january the prices in south india were at about 45 rupees a kg today they are at 68 70 rupees a kg and most probably in a week time they will cross 80 85 rupees a kg so that overall in tyson food we will see the see a significant improvement but yeah. animal feed segment will have a impact in uh, the coming quarter this quarter too uh, animal feed I, as i told you know that layer does not go up and go down significantly i think layer has suffered a lot during covid when the placements were not there and india for last several months have had tightness on egg production and that is why egg prices egg farm have been at all time high the only thing is that since the broiler cycle is a short cycle it is a five week cycle there we see more fluctuations in terms of placement and in terms of feed uh, consumption can you talk more, uh, more about the product launches in uh, crop protection in the coming year and coming quarter you have it. so in terms of product launches we have around six products uh, which we propose to uh, you know which are in pipeline of which uh, four are herbicide one is a fungicide and one is a biofertilizer yeah apart from this we have around five products uh, which will be in license to us and which we propose to launch yeah out of six five is in licensing uh, no no there, there are two but different this is at different times not yeah, yeah. everything is not in the no no this is all pipeline this is a total pipeline that i am talking about there are six products which are in pipeline which is our own product okay. which we are developing 
and five products which are uh, uh, to be in license to us. So in all total 11 products, these are not all launches in the next year. This will be launched over the next two to three years. Yeah. Okay, two to three years. Okay. And uh, uh, talking about overall, uh, the in budget, uh, the government has announced uh, effectively 5% increase uh, uh, in the crude palm oil import duty, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, and with the increase, uh, the increase in prices uh, globally, and uh, this duty increase of five percent, and uh, in the coming coming season, assuming uh, uh, better uh, fruits, uh, FBV arrivals, and OER, can we expect a uh, twenty two is going to be a bumper year for the uh, palm oil? <laughs> I think in our sector. Predictions are not easy to make. Who had predicted that things will happen the way they happened last year? But definitely, the prices will be good, the OER will be good, and the arrival of fruit will be good. That I can tell you. Because this year, as we talked about, this white fly impact has been uh, quite severe. So hopefully, next year we wouldn't see that impact. So uh, definitely, things should look much better. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I need to tell you one thing. The problem was not white fly last year that much. The problem was our inability to control it because of lockdown etc. And by the time we could do that and the farmers started spraying it, had, the population had reached a critical level at which the damage was already done. White fly is not a new insect in India. It is uh, there. And you must have heard that every year it strikes some of the other crops. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shravan Vora, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. I uh, have been, uh, like, my, we've been invested in this company for the last two years. I am looking more from you on a longer term basis, how we should uh, look at the business because because of the nature of the business being such that uh, we are affected by some uh, natural uh, calamities and things like COVID, how should we look the business growth on a on a two to three year uh, basis, say if we are a six to seven thousand crore turnover company, so till where can we reach in, in a, on a longer term basis and what kind of margins we can achieve? So, uh, uh, two things. One is that definitely uh, we have we are looking at business by business. It uh, and and I must tell you that COVID also gave us an opportunity to evaluate portfolio number one and look at our cost structure, productivity, etc. I need to tell you in uh, in most of our fixed costs, particularly uh, there have been either no growth or reduction uh, in the last one year. And we believe that we have redefined uh, our cost structure, both in fixed and variable. The idea is to uh, do everything possible through cost reductions, uh, to, through research and development, and through portfolio changes to de-risk this business more and more. I do not wish to elaborate more on this call and waste everybody's time, but I would encourage you to take uh, uh, time with uh, Mrs. Chavi Agarwal, our uh, investor relation uh, general manager and we would uh, on one-on-one -on -one basis we can definitely take you through our what we are thinking and what we think uh, what realignments we have done uh, in our cost structure as well as uh, in the company right right so uh, just uh, so that i can understand better can can for see the top two or three businesses that we have can you give a little bit of longer term growth guidance or margin guidance? Because the nature of the business is such like the margins tend to be because right now the commodity prices are so depressed, they might not be so in the coming years. Also. So some longer term margin guidance and top line guidance if you can give. So agrochemicals, we will be able to maintain the same profitability and much better growth than what we did last year. Last year, if you recall my earlier, uh, um, calls almost a month we lost, month production we lost in the month of May because of COVID infections in one of our factories. So uh, animal feed margin expansion is 
uh, very much uh, on the cards. Some of the research and development initiatives will start uh, proving. They should have proved themselves last year, but because of uh, loss of volumes, etc., it could not happen. The last year was a very big disruption, I must say. So animal feed uh, margin Im and, uh, improvement will happen. Uh, and uh, agri businesses, the same margin will be there. Oil palm plantation margin expansion will happen because of several other initiatives we have taken to improve oil extraction ratio. So I'm sure that in these businesses, all these businesses, we have some strategies lined up for even if the moderate top line growth will happen, but we want all these businesses to show expanded margins in future. Right. One, of the metrics, one of the metrics we follow, unfortunately it went for a toss, is a fixed cost as a percentage of contribution. Contribution is margin after variables for us. And um, I think all the businesses have the target of um, a, a improving that ratio. That is bringing down fixed cost as a percentage of contribution so that this volatility does not hurt us the way it has hurt us last year. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vidit Shah from IIFL. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, my first question was uh, just uh, on the finance costs, which are which have kind of you know halved from the 1Q levels, and even from uh, the third quarter of last year to around six and a half crores. So, just want to understand what has um, driven the reduction and what what should we look at uh, these costs to be uh, going forward. So, uh, in terms of the uh, interest costs, basically uh, the interest rate has been definitely been uh, coming down for us and we have been borrowing at very, very competitive pricing. Uh, though our average interest cost for last quarter was around 5%, uh, the, the exit rate for us in January as we borrow today is around 3.5%. So, I am saying that uh, we have been uh, bringing down the interest uh, cost to uh, uh, do various uh, avenues. Also, apart from that, the cash flows have been reasonably good. So, all this has helped us in uh, bringing down you know, the overall finance cost. So, has has there been any change in the debt levels versus, let's say, the 2Q reported debt? Or has it been around the same level? No, no it's, it's around the same level. In fact, but we have brought down. Debt. Ah, that is different. But in terms of debt, it would be a similar level. And uh, in fact, it would have gone up a bit vis a vis Q2 because one of the things which we did was uh, we used to have a lot of supplier financing, uh, you know, which was there, supplier credit which was there. And we realized that uh, the uh, difference between the cost of funding for suppliers versus our own cost. The gap was fairly large, so we said that let us cut down on supplier finance and move to our own borrowing. And that's what we have done. So the debt level, if at all, has only gone up uh, in the current quarter uh, because of this. Yeah. Okay, understood. Also, uh, so second, secondly, you just want to understand uh, the capex budget for FI22 and the major projects that uh, the company plans to be spending on. So, uh, uh, nothing very significant in FY22, only two uh, investments will be there which are significant. One fish feed plant in Barabanki uh, in uh, near uh, Lucknow. Uh, I must tell you that the current thrust of the government on aquaculture has opened a big market for inland fisheries. Uh, you will be really surprised that the focus state for Indian fisheries are UP, Uttarakhand, Bihar, uh, parts of MP, Chhattisgarh. So um, we are coming up with a uh, floating fish feed facility in Barabanki, UP. And uh, we will continue to invest in more production facilities in Aztec. Okay, so how much uh, would like the CapEx be on these two projects? I think the, uh, the uh, the UP plant is close to about 11 or 12 million dollars, and uh, uh, Aztec will commission one herbicide plant on in two weeks' time. That is the investment uh, we had 
thought we will commission about six months ago, but got delayed because of COVID. And uh, then we embark on one more facility, which will get commissioned in FY23. Uh, but uh, the capex for next year will be close to about ten billion dollars. Oh, this is the R&D. Total, total, I think about uh, 150 to 170 crores. All right. All right. Got it. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Take the next question from the line of Pratik Rangnekar from Credit Suisse. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, my question is on the uh, EBIT per ton that we see in the animal feed business. Uh, from the second quarter to third quarter, there is a drop in the EBIT per ton that we see. We've seen the similar drop last year as well. So is there something to call out there or is there some kind of seasonality that we need to know here? Oh, yeah, there is a seasonality factor which is there. Uh, in Q2 versus Q3, uh, the salience of the aqua feed reduces. And that is what is sort of causing this kind of a uh, change. So, uh, but for that, otherwise, you know, uh, there are no major challenges there. Other than that, whatever RM uh, input cost uh, increase has been there that you've seen after the quarter and most of that has been passed on. Is that understanding correct? Yes. Okay, so my, my next question is on the bird flu part. So could you just kind of just summarize for all of us uh, what are the impacts that you're seeing on the different parts of the business from feed and the poultry business together as in separately if you could just kind of summarize it for us. Uh, impact of bird flu on feed as well as uh, poultry. So, uh, impact of bird flu uh, is going to be very severe on Godrej Tyson Foods Limited in case the prices don't recover and reach remunerative level in next one week. But the consumption is back to normal. The stocks are depleting at the farm and south has started rallying. East was the first to rally. Cost of production of chicken in East is about uh, 80, 82 rupees and the prices have crossed 100 rupees in last one week. But unfortunately, we are not present there. And I think similar thing is likely to happen in South. And if West follows, then we will be able to recover whatever we have lost uh, in, in, in January in the quarter uh, total. Uh, I don't see much of impact on layer feed because layer feed anyway, the uh, egg consumption is short and there has been no disruption because of bird flu. But I definitely feel that broiler feed will have a small dip, uh, particularly in the month of February, because it takes time for feed to dip. Initially, when the birds uh, are not sold, they continue to eat. So broiler feed has a lag effect as far as impact of bird flu is concerned. Fair enough. So, uh... But having, having said that, I think, uh, the full impact of drop in raw material prices in margin expansion in animal feeds you will see this week, this quarter call. Uh, thanks for that. So just a follow up on that. Uh, we, we are seeing the consumption from the Horeca segment pick up. So can that, will that not be sufficient to uh, tide over the impact of bird flu? You would say that it, despite... No, no. Horeca will take time. Actually, it is, it is more talk and less on the ground actually. I must tell you that what was the big consumer of animal protein, whether it is curd, ice cream, milk, chicken, uh, the big consumer, big consumption was in parties, banquets, marriages, etc. And that is the big uh, uh, problem right now because most of the states have restrictions in number of people and a lot of these things are not happening at the same level. So my sense is that Horeca will take time. But if you really ask me, why things will improve because industry has already contracted. Okay, so it's more a function of the base. On that base, yeah. we will be able to see a growth. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks for uh, all. Thanks and all the best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions. If you have any further questions or would like to know more about the company, we would be happy to be of assistance. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you once again for taking the time to join us on this call. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Godrej Agrovet Limited, 
that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Mm -hmm.